Welcome to our lecture online. When you see an expression and it contains four terms, and we're supposed to simplify using factoring, you may want to consider grouping. And in this case, for both examples right here, that may be a good technique on the right in the numerator and on the left in the denominator. So let's see what happens when we try to group and then try to factor. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to group the first two together. So that would be 2x squared minus 18. So consider those as a group. And then plus a minus 3x squared plus 27. I simply wrote it like this so you can see how we're grouping it together. In the denominator, we still end up with a 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. So now we're going to factor out something common out of this group and something common out of this group. So when we do that, here, notice we can probably factor out a 2. So when we do that, we get 2 times uh, x squared minus 9. And over here, if we want to end up with a positive x squared and a negative number here, we'll factor out a negative 3. So minus 3 times, we end up with an x squared minus 9 as well. Notice now, in this term and in this term, we have a common factor, x squared minus 9. In the denominator, we're probably just going to factor that writing it as a product of two binomials. We have a 2x squared here, so we need a 2x and an x. For the signs, we need a positive and a negative. And let's see here, number-wise, probably 3 and 3. Hmm, uh, because we have a negative 9 there. So let's try that. Let's try a 3 and a 3. And then sign-wise, one must be positive, one must be negative, but we end up with a positive 3x. That means we want a positive sign over here and a negative sign over here. Notice a 2x times a positive 3 is a positive 6x. This gives a negative 3x. 6x minus 3 gives us a positive 3, so it looks like the right combination. In the numerator, we're going to factor out an x squared minus 9. So we have an x squared minus 9. And then we're left with a positive 2 and a minus 3. Well, that can then be combined to be negative 1. In the denominator, we end up with a 2x minus 3 multiplied times an x plus 3. Now notice in the numerator, this can be factored to be x plus 3, x minus 3, because it's a difference, it's a difference of squares. So this can be written as an x plus 3 times an x minus 3 times, so we had left, 2 minus 3 would be minus 1, all divided by a 2x minus 3 multiply times an x plus 3. And then notice that the x plus 3's are common in the numerator and denominator, so that cancels out. So we're left with, we can put the negative in front, so that would be negative 1 times an x minus 3 divided by a 2x minus 3. I didn't leave myself a lot of room, but there would be the final version. We could also write it as 3 minus x if you want to get rid of the negative 1. Over here, we'll do something similar. We can see that in the numerator, we can factor out a 4x. And then we're left with a 2x cubed plus 1. In the denominator, notice we have four terms, so we're going to group them together in groups of 2, like this, and factor out what's common. Over here, what's common would be a 3x. That leaves us with a 2x cubed plus 1. And over here, we can factor out a 2. That leaves us with an x cubed plus 1. Uh, nope, not an x cubed, but a 2x cubed plus 1. And then notice we have similar factors in the denominator. So this can then be written as a 4x times 2x cubed plus 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, we can factor out from here. And from here, we can factor out a 2x cubed plus 1. And then we have left the 3x plus 2. And then realize that the 2x cubed plus 1 is common in the numerator and the denominator, so that cancels out with this. And then we're left with, in the numerator, a 4x, and in the denominator, a 3x plus 2. And that would be the simplified form of that one. And as you can see, something that looked quite big and ugly in the beginning looks quite elegant and small in the end. And that is how it's done.